Yes, Tim. Jim. This Tim. is a question period. Question period. So, uh, I was wondering, what is the very beginning you said I'm an empiricist. And, and then you put the, uh, and I've seen this Oh yeah, yeah to the last last line. Yeah, I'm bl I am bliss consciousness. Chit oh. Chitanan Chit is consciousness. Ananda is bliss. Okay. Arupa, I, I am of the form of bliss consciousness. Right. Yes. So so my question is, how does bliss consciousness relate to elephant? It is is elephant bliss consciousness, or is elephant inside of bliss consciousness? That's a good question, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> now if if, if you if you get the elephant, if you let go completely of the rider, if the rider goes away, then the bliss comes. But you've got to get rid of the rider. And you've got to really, really get rid of the rider. And this, you know, the symbolic consciousness thing, I mean, the deal is, how do you get rid of the I? And this self-inquiry is a way, the, the lack of attachments, I mean, the very strong attachments, the one attachment that I go bring the house down and probably all throw start things thrown at me, is you're not in control. I mean, another thing that we believed we had in the hierarchy was free will. Now, it must have been evolutionarily useful because we get dopamine because if we exercise free will. We think we have free will. It feels like there's something there, and we feel good for feeling it. And so it must have been evolutionarily, Darwinianly useful for some part of the hierarchy to believe they had free will. But there's nothing scientifically to support it. Nor experientially. I mean, I, and I've told, I've told too many people probably about this, but I mean, for me, I never would have gotten myself there uh, philosophically. If I had tried to reason my way, uh, Sam Harris-like, through to no, to no free will, I wouldn't have gotten there because I just, I just couldn't make, believe that was possible. But then when the film fell away, and I was standing there with just no eye. It was like, duh, I mean, there's nobody here. And so there can't be any free will because there's nobody to have it. And I've found no deviations from that since that time. So, so all right, so we get rid of the rider. Yeah. And the blissful consciousness is there. So is this elephant like uh, some sort of appendage? What is the, is well, here, the, is the elephant just... Uh, Oh, okay, well, just, just, just treat the elephant as, as, a, as a massive, self-contained, wonder of the universe processor. Now, the, the challenge, and this is, this is a challenge for Sam Harris, which he won't take up, is, okay, um, all these people came in this room today. And you look back in any of your histories at what had to all be arranged for all of us to be here in this room today, at this time, as you can't do it. And so you've got to have, how do you have multiple elephants? <laughs> you have one elephant, but you've got multiple elephants. This is a Sam Harris question. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the man. <laughs> yeah, this is Sam Harris question. See, isn't that great? You know, see, that's, that's why he's here. He's why he's here. <laughs> and, and that's the, the question. To, now if you, if you um, Robert Wright's book, Why Buddhism is True. I'm in that book a lot. And, and thank you. And there's, a, there's a, I, I didn't write it. <laughs> but you wish that you did. No, I don't. No, I don't. Not, not even this much. No, not much. There's a video of Sam Harris interviewing Bob Wright. Well, it goes like an hour, two hours or something. And they're talk talking about me, Sam Harris and, and Bob Wright. And he said, you know, this whole thing about what this thing is, this process has turned into. And Sam says, well, <sighs> he goes back to Buddhism. He says, well, you know, that's, if, if, we, if we believe that we have, you know, something else, then we have to reify you know, an abstract concept, and I just don't buy that. I go with the Buddhists. It was Buddhism against Advaita Vedanta. And so it's like, okay, which, which is it going to be? Sam takes Buddhism. 
Because, you know, it is, it is atheistic, nominally. Not really, but nominally atheistic. And I think the reason Sam can't move forward is he can't imagine, and I don't know how he deals with this, how all these elephants in this room somehow got together here in West Virginia for this couple days. That's not easy. You've got to figure out some way these elephants are talking to each other. And for me, you know, there's got to be something bigger than that. And that was my, when I, I wasn't headed that direction when the, when the free will fell away, but I found something was running my life way better than I could do it. Way better. And I had, you know, watched it and watched it and watched it, and it, whatever it is, and my favorite pet, pet you know, belief now, not just mine, is that the Higgs field penetrates everything. We know that. Nobel Prize. Uh, we know we can take potential matter into matter, Higgs field. Um, what we don't know is, okay, if there's a field there, what properties does it have? Well, a field can't have properties that none of its agents don't have. So if we have free will, the field must have free will. Or we, the field's through everything. Penetrates every corpuscle, every molecule, every atom. So the field's everywhere. So it must at least have the properties of anybody in the field. So it must be at least as smart as we are, self-aware, intelligent. And from what I see happening, you know, it's way, way, way better connected than I am, or Sam Harris is. Because it can arrange all these elephants to come here. And I couldn't do that. So somehow, something has brought all these elephants together. And Sam has no answer for that one. And so that led me into, okay, is this an intelligent field? And is it running everything? And my sense of it is yes. And you've heard me call it she. If you're in South India, they call it he because Shaivism is big in the South. If you go further north, it's she because you know, Kali and Durga are big in the north. So it shifts around it. But I like it she because it was I surrendered into her, into this field. See, I surrender into the field. The more I let go into the field, something came out that was compassionate, that was holding me. I didn't expect that. I expected, you know, Old Testament God to kick my ass. You know. <laughs> but I, I, I didn't expect, you know, something to feel compassionate. This is strange. And so the more I let go into that understanding, and in fact there was something else bigger than me really, I think, the more I was held. I let go completely, and I am completely held. I have no, no sense of what's going to do the next second. None. I'm not unique in this thing. I mean, I think everything is being managed at a big level. And I, I think this nugget, argumentative perhaps, is evolutionary. I think we're all evolving. It would make sense that the field is also evolving. And I think we're the evolutionary sensing pods through which she gathers data for the field. And as we do our thing, then we change the memes in the field. We put intelligence into the field. The field gets more and more evolved and keeps doing this and doing this and doing this. It's argumentative, probably unprovable ever. But that's what it feels like for me. And so I have no problem surrendering everything, every, 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 everything to her. And that's how I live my life. I have no sense of doing anything. I'm not kidding about the book. I thought we were done with books. I thought we were going to go, I felt we were going to go this way, or an I means. And I said, no. He said, no, we're going to do a book. I said, no, not really. It's a book. And so the book manifested. But I didn't write any of it. I mean, if you watch yourself, your own self carefully, you don't think up what you say. You don't think up your thoughts. If you don't think up your thoughts, why do you think you have control and free will? You don't think up your thoughts. Watch it. Just sit there and watch your thoughts. You don't think them up. Where do they come from? They're not consciously created. You don't think up what you say. Some good research, you know, demonstrating this to hands down. You don't think up what you say. If you watch, if I had to sit here and think up what I'm saying on a 40-bit processor, <laughs> or, 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 it wouldn't. It just wouldn't work. 
So it's got to be the elephant, and something bigger than that, I think, is running things. And I perfectly, and I was not headed atheist, I was not headed theistically. I was agnostic at best when I left fundamental Christianity. It was a complete disappointment to me. It just didn't work at all. And so I moved other ways. But I was never an atheist. I just I didn't, didn't care. And God didn't care about me, and so I didn't care about God. So. You're saying that uh, you are now in a totally non-duality world. Like, well, that, there's, that, but that's, there's a contradiction there, too. I mean, Well, but um, you know what I mean. No, well, I don't know what you mean. No, no I don't know what you mean. Because, I don't want to explain it. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, because when I, when I look, look out, when I, if I, and really, this gets really curious, um, my eyes aren't great. Uh, I have some places great, are not great. And so it's useful for me to not wear glasses because then I can see you fuzzy. If I put the right prescription glasses on for this depth, then it gets really freaky. It gets really strange. And it's not a place where you can function from. I mean, it's really hard to operate in that space because it's like a Surrealist painting only, more like a, a um, surrealism. Uh, <laughs> no, not cubism. Maybe it's, maybe it's real. Abstract. Not even after, it's, it's, it's like, it isn't even, you know, the, the point job. It isn't even like pointillism. And this isn't pointillism, but, but, but this, this, has, this has sharp edges. It's like Magritte. Like, well, but, but it's, 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 it's more like Magritte, but whatever you want to call him, it's like Magritte, where you have very sharp edges, very sharp lines. Uh, that you know, they clearly there's feeling some strange chirico. There's some strange things going on. You know what it is? Like Magritte's thing didn't make any sense, but they made sense in some way. They, they have a not 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 quite not quite there. <laughs> just, just back a little bit from that. But 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 this idea of I mean the the world becomes really different. It goes it's very energetic. It's almost pulsing it so alive, but it isn't, there's no boundaries. There's different discrete things, but they're jammed together like the surrealists jammed them together, whatever that is. So I, 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 don't, wear those kind of, I don't wear those glasses very often. Do you drive? Yeah, well, <laughs> no, no, I don't. No, I don't drive. That's the elephant's job. <laughs> No, no, but I didn't do it. Well, but you thought about it somehow. I mean, somebody uh, invited you at some point, or you decided to... Out of the blue, out of the absolute blue, yes. completely could not be more unexpected, he sends me an email. I had okay, no... Okay, fine. So he sends you the email, you get the email, and then what? Then I look at it, Yes. and I feel, does I should go to this thing or not go to this thing? Okay, and then you say, you'll go to this thing. And then what? I respond to him, I say... I'll be there. Okay. No, no, we have, but just the difference is, you know, I was going to plan to come here. Okay, I planned to come here. Okay. Just, just, can you just a second, please? Just a second. Just a second. <laughs> a second. So I planned to come here. Yes. But on my trip down for three hours, many, 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 many things happened that were out of my control. Many things. Yeah. No part of the journey where the policeman was hiding, you know, where there was gas, where there wasn't yeah. gas, where the t- construction, not construction, totally out of my control. Right. So I, I make a plan, and I'm headed kind of like to West Virginia, <laughs> and I give it to the Garmin. The Garmin says, take a left, and I take a left. <laughs> take a right, and I take a right. But there's no control. You have no, absolutely no control what happens on that trip. None. You took the, you started the trip, and you ended the trip. But at I, a certain point. You're the whole point. You're really, you're, <laughs> you live in the dualistic world, no? You do. Yes. Well, I do. <laughs> What's the name? Pardon? Lou? 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 Huh? Lou? 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 Maybe I could try. I, Gary said something very important, and I, I think we might have missed the, the thing that he said about you don't decide to think that the thoughts, I don't, I'm talking to you now, you're going to go back there. I'm talking to you, 
I'm not thinking, now I'm going to say I'm talking to you. I'm not thinking these words. They right. come up. Right. So here's something that one of Ms. Argadada's students talked to me once. He said, here's a great exercise. At the end of the day, look back at your day and pick one thing that you think I definitely decided to do. Just do, do that. Simple exercise. And then ask yourself, why did you decide to do that rather than this? There might have been many choices, might have been none. Because a thought came up, do this one rather than that one. Mm. And now what Philo Carey said, where did that thought come from? Did I decide now I'm going to think that it was no? That thought came up, and that's once that thought came up and said, do this, and you listen to it, off you go. Where, where in that? Uh, this man said, where is that is the free will? Where is the, where is the free will? And take any, take the most, I'm sure, yes, I decided. What do you mean you decided? You decided because either the thought came up to do it, or a few thoughts came up, and that one of those took preference. And you didn't say, now I'm going to think these thoughts. And no, they come up. Mm -hmm. So he's just saying, look at that. No, no, no dogma, no one has to Take a look at that sometime. Do it for yourself. Do the inquiry and look and see. It's a it's a great it's a great point. Yeah, Nizar Gadana was, was very on point on that. I, mean, I don't buy everything Niz said. I mean, his yeah. uh, you know I am I, I was a Tony Packer. Which no, 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 this it's, is it's, anyway. it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. It's fine. But but th that's a good point. I mean, there's yeah. we had an exercise where you say, okay, start your day, predict what you're going to do, and see what happens, and predict the details. Not just macro details, and see what happens. Yeah. Never the same. But there's a there's a complicated aspect in there, and I don't know if that's what Lou is having trouble with. Is that after the rhythms thought, you wonder where they came from. One of them takes precedence. The complicated issue is, and there's very strong neuroscience to support it. <clears throat> then something the eye takes credit for. Oh yeah. Ah, I mean, yeah. But that's that's yeah. milliseconds later. It's always later. And whether it's even raising your hand. Right. Yeah. You know, they can show in the laboratory you raise your hand and then and after it's happens. already happening, you take credit for it. The I, little I or whatever you want to call it. Yes. You take credit for it. So that's the you also have to get through that. That's kind of like a superimposed layer on top no, no, of the it, other No, it's stuff. good you brought that up. You live it did the fun foundational experiments in this back in you know, 35, 30 years ago. And he showed exactly that. That in fact, you can watch the brain actually mix the chemicals, mm -hmm. get the chemicals in place to start the action to take place, and someplace along the way, halfway before it happens, you're told, hey, we're going to move that hand. And then you go out and the hand gets moved. But you weren't there for deciding to mix the hand, move the hand. The brain already decided. And that's the whole elephant rider thing, is the elephant's mixing the chemicals. And you're saying, oh, oh, what a great thought I had. Yeah, the eye takes credit. Yeah. So, you know, so there are aptitudes, like there's, uh, people are, are uh, designed to be athletes. Be athletes, yeah. Yes. Okay. So my question is, is that true for uh, getting off the elephant? Yes. Or you, you have an aptitude yes. for that? Yes. And, and I don't. I, I didn't choose. I'm just saying. No, no, no. No, I, I mean. No, no. But I do. But, <laughs> no, no. No, I, I absolutely do. I mean, but, but nobody could have been a less likely candidate for this than myself. Well, you don't know that. Well, let me just back up. Let me finish, finish Darcy. I mean, you know. When I, when I left high school, my principal told my parents, Gary will never amount to anything. <laughs> Which at some level, he was right. <laughs> he was right at some level. <laughs> no, 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 no. But, I, but, but now that I have, in the course of this process, I now know six billionaires. Now, I'm not bragging at all. No, there's no attachment. But how is it in the hell? Could I possibly come from this completely inauspicious beginning 
and end up doing that by myself. That's my big argument for her. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, I, I get that. Okay. But, so, but, so, There was, so you, you were, in your incarnation as a human being, you were manifest as mind and body and that, right? And so, um, and, and that manifestation, we could say, came from God and is being used by God, or whatever word you want to use, right? Good. Yeah, something bigger. Good. And, uh, and so you, uh, and so that, you had no decision about it. give you two quotes. Okay. Uh, one quote, um, questioner. <clears throat> How did you ever arrive at these amazing understandings? Um, Albert Einstein responded, uh, I take, I claim credit for nothing. Everything is determined, the beginning as well as the end, by forces over which we have no control. It is determined for the insect as well as for the star." human beings, vegetables, or cosmic dust, we all dance to a mysterious tune in tones of distance by an invisible piper. Einstein. Martin Maharshi, questioner. <clears throat> Are only the most important things in a person's life, like major occupation or profession, predetermined? Or are trivial acts also, like taking a cup of water, or moving from one part of the room to another? Martin Maharshi replied, everything is predetermined. <laughs> the question is, if that is true, okay. that everything is predetermined, it appears to be. If I, I'm just talking about it in the language of aptitudes. Yep. So, one of the uh, social sciences is, is to be able to isolate aptitudes. And there's been a ton of research on this. Like, I can take somebody, I can take through a series of tests, and I will determine you have these aptitudes, which means you're more likely to be a musician, a successful as a musician, than Jim is. Y yes, yes, there, there seem to be, and, what, and yes, there seems to be some things that, that are very, most people who get very far along have something like this. But I think if you don't have uh, a lot of suffering, I mentioned this early, and so you aren't, you're really, really driven to end your suffering like nothing else matters in your life, then that's important. If you got that, you got a good chance. In fact, Ajahn would say, you, you'll make it, almost no matter what. If you really have a huge, huge, huge desire, that's your aptitude. Now, but, no, you still have to have. Still, yeah, still. Can I get that back to you just so I'm understanding? So if you have an inner sense of suffering and anxiety, we're not talking about circumstantial, we're talking about this sense in me that, that it's not enough. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but it's, it's not, not enough. I mean, to me it was, this is, I won't say bad words, um, there is no alternative. I have to do this. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. And that was there from six or seven years old. I don't know how it felt that way, but nothing else mattered. If I died and this hadn't happened, it was a failure. Okay. Are there others like that? Not many. Well, well, I mean, the st stats aren't very good on this. No, no, I mean, there is, there are some ancient texts, and there's um, Puyan. Puyan? Albert Puyan? Yeah, yeah everyone knows. Uh, one of Richard Rose's maybe la latest teachers, and the teachers, Zen guy. Uh, his teacher in Japan, you probably heard this story. His teacher in Japan um, had 
4,000 students. Out of those 4,000, oh, 3,000, out of those 3,000 students, four made it. And that's, that's an already select population. I mean, if they get to the Zen master's door for consideration for inclusion in his, and it went on for like 30 or 35 years or something, and so it, they came to his door, that was, the first cut was already made. And the, the text will show, Bhava Gita will say, Rubiga says, it's one in, one in a thousand will get to the Zen master's door. And out of those, one in a thousand will make it. And out of those, four made it. Three thousand, four made it. So, if suffering, so there are folks that I have heard of, maybe that, who, who awakened, that didn't awaken through suffering. I think they always think that comes to mind as someone who's just curious. Mm-hmm. Just, just wanted to know mm-hmm. Just wanted to know the truth. So, well, let's, let's do it, Maharshi. I mean, I, I know. No, 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 no. Go ahead. No, I, I know. I know a fair amount about that. I mean, his grandmother, uh, who was in her 80s, died of cancer. Okay. And she was really deeply schooled in Advaita Vedanta. Oh, yeah, I didn't know. Don't think, the, the texts are out there. You can get hold of them. I didn't know that until very recently. Somebody told me that. Uh, Maharshi, you said that you've been teaching for 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I've been teaching for 30 years. Yeah. 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 Relative died. He was living in his, his uncle's place up on the second floor. And he went over and he laid down and said, I'm going to try to recreate this dying process. So he laid there on the ground and recreated this dying process. And he saw that he was the undying consciousness. But he spent 10 years in Virupaksha Cave integrating that understanding. Yes, he had the seeing, but he spent 10 years in Virupaksha Cave, most of the time meditating by himself. Somebody else was there to take care of him. But he was absorbed in that for 10 years. So yes, flip, but long integration period. And so, true. Even, I mean, almost anybody you can think of um, that's legit, uh, they've had a maturation period, even Eckhart. I mean, if you look at Eckhart's before, read his Wikipedia thing, before and after, there was a lot of stuff before and after. You know, something happened, yes, flip, flip, flip took, uh, switched to place, but the, the making up of the structure in the elephant to support that understanding takes time. I mean, the brain is a finite structural organism. If you, you want to be, this is a 10,000 hour argument, if you want to be a master chess player, the best studies were done on chess players, South American chess players. We know what it takes to be a chess master. How many ELO points you have to accumulate to become a chess master. Ran studies, large group, 200 and some chess masters. 11,000 hours, what it takes. 11,000 hours for chess masters, concert violinists, and for meditators. Not surprising, I mean, the brain takes restructuring. And it's a very careful organism. It's been evolved a certain way. And it takes, at a very physio- physiological level, it takes 10,000 hours to basically reconfigure it. So people say, I, I'm awake. I'm, there's lots of them. I'm enlightened now. I get to that. <laughs> <laughs> but but they, they've had one experience, maybe a nice big experience. And some of them live in that experience for 25 years. One guy in England, he said, I, I'm awakened. I had this experience 25 years ago. Well, our species has a very poor uh, evolved response to long-term memories. We don't make good long-term memories. In fact, if you uh, take any memory that you've used several times, I've been in some false memory studies. Uh, you pull that up again. Every time you pull it up, the brain changes something. Every time. If you have a, this is like, this goes back to the attachment thing, old stories. If you've had a, you know, something in your childhood that you've recalled 500 times, there's no chance it's correct. No chance. Zero. This false study I was in at Penn State, they gave us a bunch of pictures. Motorcycles, uh, backpacks, lamps, and they showed us we had, we had like five seconds, four choices. Uh, like it, love it, like it, don't like it, hate it. For an hour. FMRI. Okay, go home. Come back tomorrow. Come back tomorrow and say, okay, we want you to remember those. 
Christ. <laughs> what? So, same thing follows. They show us the same sequence of, they show us backpacks, you motorcycle watch, blah, blah, Show them. Three choices. I remember this exactly, and I know the, the, characteristic by, the characteristic by which I remember it. One. Second one was, yeah, I remember it, but I'm not sure how I remember it, why I remember it. Third one was, never saw it before. So the same thing. You go through something. Get to the end, and I was, you know, I was talking to the guy who the thing afterwards. I said, well, you know, it was really strange. I got some of these that were, I knew exactly the characteristic that it was supposed to be there, but there was just something wasn't right about it. He said, yeah, that's false memory. What happens is the brain's running around trying to assemble a picture. And it has most of the pictures of backpacks. It's just, well, we could have been there. Just slaps a backpack in there. Backpack strap. And it does that all the time. I mean, we were not evolved to have perfect memories. When it came down to the watering hole, you look how we process data. Some of you guys know a lot about this. You know, how we process data. So say a million pixels come in here. You've got four levels of processing back here. And what happens is out of a million pixels, only a very small number are used. And the brain doesn't try to make a good picture. All it says is, look, we're going to just take some random pixels, and we're going to change them about every 250 milliseconds. As we change them, all, that's all we care about. Has something changed in the picture? Because it didn't matter if we had a perfect representation of the watering hole. Remember, if we saw brown in the grass, some things, there's a problem here. We got a problem here. Or a bump on top of the water, little bumps on top of the water. You know, alligator. And the brain, we evolved to not have good memories. We evolved to have most useful memories. The ones who had perfect memories are gone. Most useful memories, we got those people. And so we're designed to have poor memories. And not surprisingly, the attorneys have picked up on this thing. And there are in some states, I don't know what number of states there are, but there are guidelines now about how you question people. Because I can, you know, take, take Jim here, and I can convince him, maybe, that, uh, you know, he saw, he saw a, a robbery at a liquor store. And downtown in the street, uh, I can say, Jim, did you see that car down in the street? He said, car? No. So then DA comes in and says, you know, Jim, are you sure you didn't see a car at the end of the street? I said, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah. Before long, Jim's got a car at the end of the street. Uh, and it's so, it's so easy to do it, it's scary. That's why they've changed some of the sentencing guidelines. And the problem we're going to have with this, and the same problem we have with, we're going to have with free will, is if we have no free will, what happens to the judicial system? What happens to the churches? What happens to the marketing systems? What happens to religions? I mean, if really we all take on board that we really don't have control. So, here, in line with what you're saying right now, the Chuck's question, you started your talk with the, the line that, that uh, voters, you know, the right yeah. to the constituency. Yeah. not conscious. To most people, free will only matters if it's conscious free will. If the elephant has, can do what it wants to do, that's not, you can't, you are not conscious of that, so it doesn't matter what the elephant's decided. Your perspective on that would be, well, that's just the, that's the problem of the right? Absolutely. And the experience that he's, 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 there's no volition involved, there's just an experience occurring of um, yeah, yeah, but I mean, people, I hear that argument often. Yeah, but the elephant knows. Well, sure as the elephant knows. Elephants make choices all the time. The elephant just decided to walk up there and put that bottle down. I mean, it's, that's what's going on. But I'm not conscious of that process. So it doesn't matter that the elephant's brilliant. I'm not. I'm pretty good, stupid up here. You know, it's not about this. It's about you know this body is doing things as it does things, and we can work with it all kinds of ways. We can feed it information. We can convince it of A and not B. Um, we are evolved to do certain things very specifically, but you know, like with the elephants, or like with the, you know, going down to the watering hole, uh, we're evolved to not have perfect memory because it was more successful. Yeah, 
Yeah, well, <laughs> there is a problem of not, of not forgetting, right? Yeah. Yes. You, the word bliss yes. is tossed around in spiritual circles a lot and has different views uh, in different cultures. So, in your experience, what is bliss? Well, it, it, it's it's like saying people say it's love. The problem with love. Is love, love means lots of things. Love means like 10,000 things. And it's, you know, oftentimes it's a transaction. It's, I don't want to get into this, that discussion now, but it's, often, it's very often transactional. Uh, and so from that, you know, love doesn't work. Compassion doesn't work. Um, uh, happiness doesn't work, as Richard Rose said. I mean, to really get beyond happiness, and I, can, I almost put my first book out as uncaused happiness. Because the unique thing is to have happiness that doesn't have any reason for me. There's no reason to be happy. I'm generally happy. And, you know, there's no, uh, nothing going on except that. It's uncaused happiness. Bliss, bliss is like, yeah, I'm bliss. I was very blissful. I took some, took some, some, some weed and I was really blissful for a while. Whatever it is, I mean, you can feel bliss, but it's hard to get your hands around it. So I default to stillness, because it doesn't really tell you, except it just says, are you really still? And if you are, then you've probably got some other stuff figured out. But it's hard to pick any, anything. It's like saying, what's the taste of wine? What does, what does green tea taste like? I mean, you've got to do it. You've got to actually taste the wine to see if it's a good wine or a bad wine, if you like it, if you don't like it. And so how, how do you describe that except to do the experience? And so we, there's no, we have no good word to capture it, no adequate word. Any word you pick is going, to be, is going to fail, which is why you can't intellectually work your way towards understanding this stuff. I mean, you've got to experience it personally. That word, that word implies... Yeah, the problem, the problem with constant orgasms. Uh, <laughs> no, no. That's right. Constant orgasm. Constant orgasm. We in constant orgasm. But the, the, problem, the problem with the whole, whole bliss thing is, and, and this gets, gets back to psychedelics and, and weed and everything, heroin and everything else, is the brain has all the pathways, all the gateways that weed has and all the serotonin psychedelics have, all the opioids have. The brain has the same chemistry. It has to, or those things wouldn't work on us. I mean, you could actually found out you know, what the marijuana pathways were by people smoking weed and looking, and we say, hey, look, there is there are actually some cannabinoid pathways, receptors, and, you know, chemistry. We actually found it with, with weed. You know, it's, that's a whole other discussion, but, but the same thing with the opioids. I mean, the brain only has so much opioids. And what it seems like, in my experience, is that it gives you dopamine. And this is in that blog post I mentioned about self-inquiry versus ego's eyes. I mean, it, it starts out as, okay, dopamine, dopamine, dopamine. That's lots of dopamine, lots of dopamine. Dopamine, you go on your phone, I like, I like, I don't like, I like, I like, I like, I like. Somebody liked your thing, I like, I like, I like, I like. Like, dopamine, 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 dopamine. You get 140 hits of dopamine a day. And so how do you compete with that machine? Because you can get that. I mean, we, we've been hacked by the machines into loving them so much, some people can't imagine living without them. And it's not surprising, it's a drug addiction. You're dopamine, dopaminergically addicted to the machine because it gives you positive dopamine hits over and over and over again. And so that's the challenge. You've got other competitors for this dopamine bandwidth. So you say, okay, well, I can, I can do this thing for you. You say, well, I can do this thing 40, 140 times a day. Why would I worry with your thing? So you get dopamine, so I don't care about dopamine. Opioids, I can get heroin down the corner with or without fentanyl. Uh, so why would I bother with this thing? And the elephants, you know, the 
the elephant seems to wait until you get closer and closer to the best possible state it can attain, and it begins enriching it with do opioids. I mean, there is what we call bliss coming into this thing as well to reinforce this thing. But it, it, can, it can be very blissful for a long time. But it also seems to have reserve to push some really big experiences, even on top of this normal situation. It can do that too. But it doesn't only really have so, much, so many opioids to, to work with. But it has lots of dopamine. And it uses it. And the problem is going to be how we convince anybody to do this work rather than that. Really. Really. That's the problem. I mean, we have a massive uh, addiction to those machines. And people say, well, the machines are going to take us over. Well, they already have taken us over. <laughs> Not going to, they've got us. Except we've been taking those. That's okay. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I, I saw a uh, TED talk by one of the guys who was at the very beginning of the, of the internet. And they were considering, you know, what exactly what would happen to this process going forward. And one of the big futurists at that time, long ago, said, well, you know, <laughs> crazy thing. The big problem would be, what if we actually develop some kind of a device, say, that gives us, you know, the machines control over us? No, that's impossible. You can't even imagine that's never going to happen. We got them right there. We got them. And that's, they say, the internet can be good or it can be very bad. And I think with social media, we've created a tool that can really do very bad things to us. And we're doing them because we're just not paying attention. We're manipulated easily. False news, you know, confirmation bias. We're doing it. Did you say, I just want to go back to you were answering Phil, did you say you conceive of bliss as stillness? Is that what you say? No, no, I, I'm, just, I'm just saying it's kind of like a gateway drug or whatever. It's just, it's basically saying, look, if, if you say, are you still? I say, no, I'm not. Okay, then I know they haven't quieted down the default mode network. They haven't quieted, let me, let me do the default mode network quickly. Because this, this is useful. This gets back to the network. Okay, default mode network, you have in your deep down in the brain, deep in the center of the brain, like here, the front part, in the middle, and back here in the middle, you have two big centers. This one doesn't matter what it's called, PCC. No. These two guys talk to each other all the time. Blah, 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 blah. These guys. They're the two core centers of this default mode network. Okay? Now, there are two. The, the first big paper by Andrews Hanna and Neuron in 2010, she came up with the first good resolution of this thing. And there are also, on the side... Two other subnetworks. One has five members, one has four members. Okay, this one over here, it talks to the big guys. They talk to each other. They always talk to the big guys. Okay? And this one is in charge of past, present, future. Giving you the sensation that in fact you are an entity passing through time. It's a circuit the brain developed. It was evolutionarily useful for us to believe we had a past, present, and future. And so it has this circuitry constructed to generate that perception. Not reality, perception. Also, another one is it has The other one is self and other, you and objects. You're discrete from objects. And by many ways, you can either do it with meditation, psychedelics, Sufi whirling. Uh, there are lots of ways to get there. Most every culture has found a way to do this thing. 
you can break this temporarily or permanently. And as you break that, then what happens is that you have the mystical experiences of all is one, and now, now, now. This is not a, you know, this is exactly the circuitry that creates it. We have, we have circuits to make us believe we have a you know, past, present, future, and there are objects and us. And so the mystical experiences, very routinely across all cultures reported, are those two things. And we can do them lots of ways. And so the brain created those. They're perceptions. They're not realities. And they were useful for us evolutionarily. So we developed them. So that's my that's illusion. Sir? That's my illusion. Yes. 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 Good point. Yes. That's the illusion network. They all don't. They all, they all don't. They all don't. No, I mean, for chimpanzees, have it, is that goodbye or is that 10 minutes? Okay. <laughs> chimpanzees have, I don't know. Chimpanzees have exactly the same wiring we do. Uh, there's no reason other than utility that they didn't develop it. They could have developed it. But the chimpanzees were here. We broke off six million years ago, the humanoids did. The chimpanzees are going along here, and the, this Congo River comes in and splits the chimpanzees. And over on this side, there's no food, not much food. So what you get are nasty, mean, non-cooperative, cannibalistic, no two chimpanzees ever carry a log together. Just a nasty bunch of guys. On the other side of the river, there was lots and lots of food. And the bonobos were created. And the bonobos said, hey, this is cool. We have lots of food. This is cool. What are we going to do? Let's have sex. And so they have sex for everything. Sex for hi, good morning. Sex for breakfast. Sex for I'm going to go downstairs. Sex for That's it. They do you, videos. They're doing everything you can possibly imagine. Any number of things can do. And so you just, you know, just the way, you know, it turns out, they had lots of food, and they said, well, sex is cool. And they, they did it. These guys, nasty. And so, they, because they had no food. And so, they could have developed the same thing the bonobos did, but they didn't have any food. And so, you know, that just shows you how much, you know, it depends upon what your culture, what your evolution is.